Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today we have an idea episode and we're going to be talking about the evolution of CMMS. And to have us walk through this conversation, I'm very excited to have with me Sandy D'Souza, who is the Director of Channel Partnerships at Fix Software. So welcome, Sandy. Yeah, thanks so much, Chris. Really glad to be here. Appreciate you having me on. For sure. I mean, just been looking forward to this conversation. We have not talked about CMMS at all on Eco Ask Why, so this is well overdue. Super excited to, to, to have you come in. I know you're an expert in this field. I'm just, I'm ready to learn. So maybe lay a base for our listeners out there, Sandy, if you don't mind. Just explain what that CMMS is, maybe what it stands for and how it's used in industry. Yeah, um, great question, right? So CMMS, Computerized Maintenance Management System, um, in short, used in the industry to track, manage, plan, schedule, organize um, all of the maintenance against equipment, typically. So, um, you know, if you think about uh, your car, uh, if you go out and maintain your car, change the oil every five, 10,000 miles, um, you know, the same principles really apply to industrial equipment. So a CMMS um, really helps you uh, organize, uh, you know, those activities across not just one piece of equipment, but uh, across many pieces of equipment. Okay, very cool, man. And, and we're calling this the evolution of CMMS. So I'm, a, I'm assuming here that this, this is, has really evolved over time. So maybe the last five, 10 years, what's been the evolution? Look, what does that look like? Yeah, you know, it's, it's super interesting, right? Like CMMS um, as a category, first of all, I'm pretty new to it um, as of you know, four and a half years ago. But what I didn't know is the category has been around for like 30 years, right? People have been doing this for a very long time. Um, and what's super cool is, you know, as um, systems and IT technologies have evolved, um, you know, it seems like, you know, first consumer products evolve and then, you know, business systems and, you know, you think about CRM and you think about, you know, companies like Salesforce, right? Like a great model in, in software as a service. They really, you know, kind of um, organized and, uh, you know, built their software around the end user. And if you think about what's happened in CMMS in the last three to five years, you know, kind of the power of the cloud and the power of mobile and the focus on end user experience has really taken the, the category by storm. So tons of evolution, right? I mean, uh, the, the category has been around a long time. People have been doing it for a long time, but, uh, you know, it's really gotten exciting uh, in the last number of years, I would say. Very good. I mean, it sounds like I can hear the passion in your voice about it, man. That sounds like for 30 years, I can imagine things really have evolved. And you mentioned that user experience being the, uh, a big piece of that as well. So break that down for us. What, from a user experience standpoint, what's the big difference there? Yeah. You know, I think like any other software, right. In years gone by, if you're using business software, you had to be an expert in how to use that software. You have to really understand, you know, Hey, how does this database function? You know, it would take months of training to really get used to using software. Nowadays, you know, everybody expects like you, know, you pick up your phone, log into Netflix, log into Amazon and you get going and everything's really easy. And we've been spoiled, right? Like, uh, gosh, you can go buy a phone, you can get used to using an app. I remember growing up, you know, I had to learn how to use like MS-DOS and then Windows. And, you know, you really had to spend the time to figure out what you were doing. And of course, over time, you know, business software, you know, you don't necessarily need to train somebody how to use Salesforce, right? You can log in, you can look at your customer records, you can process orders. Um, and I think, you know, in the industrial space, maybe that evolution has happened a little bit more slowly. But what I've seen in the last couple of years is, you know, hey, people are expecting kind of that same experience where, hey, you know what, why can't I have a simple mobile app that has my work orders, my asset information? And by the way, why can't it, you know, tell me when I need to, you know, do my monthly preventative maintenance against the equipment? Um, so people expect that. And as a result, you know, the industry, in my opinion, has really evolved and, you know, for the better, right? Like focused on the end user, um, you know, a lot less time to set up a lot less effort involved in the part of IT. Um, and as a result, I think everybody's benefited, right? Like we're, we're all a whole lot more efficient, um, you know, and I'm, I'm sure we're going to get to this, but of course, you know, I think CMMS is only as good as the underlying maintenance process that folks have in place. And I think, you know, there's lots of great companies, lots of great people doing uh, some great things there. And of course the software kind of helps amplify and augment some of the, some of the great uh, efforts that people have put in place. For sure. You know, when you were walking through that user experience answer, Sandy, and thank you, first of all, that was a wonderful uh, walkthrough that you gave for us. One thing came to mind 
we we interviewed a uh, an OEM a while back, and he was talking about the same exact thing you you just went through about how that that user experience. He he used the iPhone as a as his example. You know, we we expect to be able to go open up an app, you know, and do whatever function is that we're trying to get done, right? Whether it's you know checking in at the at your local YMCA to see what classes they got, or you know uh, entering your budget, whatever that may be. And he's trying to think through the next evolution of OEMs of, hey, we need to make that user experience, that swipe, scroll type functionality into our machines and our equipment. And it sounds like that's been a lot of the goal for CMMS as well to really make that just what we're used to from that smartphone device that's in our pockets, uh, have that experience on the floor, you know, tied back to our maintenance. Yeah, you're, you're spot on, right? Like I kind of think of it um you know, in the terms of, you know, hey, why can't the technology get out of the way, right? Like it's hard enough to keep the equipment up and running. It's hard enough to slot maintenance in alongside production. You know, you've uh, you've got staff, everybody's pressed for time and resources and budget. You know, the last thing you want to do is now, you know, bring a piece of technology into your business where, you know, you make things more complicated, right? Like, hey, paper and pen, while, you know, maybe not as nice to look at and maybe, you know, cumbersome in some ways, Everybody kind of knows, hey, let's write down what I did and let's move on and I can save some time. You know, I can leave my gloves on, that sort of thing. And, you know, I think, you know, folks like myself, we have a software and technology background. You know, we like, you know, kind of nice software and doing cool things. But ultimately what I've learned in industry is, you know, how do you how do you make the technology basically simplify people's lives and serve the people rather than you know people being you know burdened with uh, with software and tech. It's uh, it's it's such an interesting um, problem, and uh, you know again kind of uh, getting getting a chance to witness it for the last few years has been super super interesting. And uh, um, you know I think I think you're spot on, right? Like the, the technology needs to get out of the way and let people do their work and do what they do best. No doubt. I, I love how you said, you know, let's serve the people, you know, let's, let's get the technology out the way and make it happen. And, you know, Sandy, one thing we hear a lot about, uh, we have had a, a several episodes about this topic around digital transformation and what that actually is and how companies and industry can start really working towards that. So if you look at a CMMS solution, for instance, is that an entry point? And if, and if so, you know, what does that look like? Yeah, it's, you know, it's a good point. Um, digital transformation, right? Great buzzword. Everybody's talking it, talking about it. Everybody's using the term. Admittedly, I probably overused the term uh, myself. So, uh, you know, but here cool, goes, though, right? you know, so let's it does just, sound cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but uh, yeah, I, so I don't know. I don't know if, um, you know, but, but the reality is, um, you know, in short, the answer is, the answer is yes, right? Like, I think, you know, what, what a CMMS does, and you know, we see this a lot with organizations that I work with and you know, Fix works with, is, you know, hey, if they're using paper, pen, Excel, some kind of older system to, to track and manage equipment maintenance, they may be doing a great job. But I think as you all know, at scale, it's really hard to measure performance. It's really hard to track, you know, hey, where, where are the areas I can find, you know, those incremental improvements. Uh, unless you know you've got the data um, in a in a digital format, so then you can you know slice and dice it, pull reports, review the analytics, and that sort of thing. So, as we think about digital transformation, I mean, I kind of I, I, I like CMMS a lot as an entry point, and of course, you know, hey, I'm biased, so you know, all the all the viewers are they're going to be like, hey, you work for a CMMS company, of course, you're going to say that, but you know, it is it is kind of interesting because you're not really forcing a major change in the business process per se. Mm -hmm. I think the technology is kind of augmenting it and it's giving you the ability then to, you know, automate things that maybe you couldn't automate before. So maybe, you know, a monthly PM automatically goes to the right technician. Um, you know, it's, it's a way to take your existing process and automate it. And then of course, it's a way to measure um, what's happening um, in, in your business and in, in the operations department um, a little bit more easily. So as a starting point, I think, you know, I'm a fan of simplicity, right? Like I, um, you know, I think we've all read lots of different analyst reports and they've got lots of great data in there and lots of great information. Um, a lot of pie in the sky thinking. Um, I, I kind of like, hey, start small, move fast, you know, find find those improvements. And I think over time that'll help inform, you know, the future strategy uh, as well. So, um, and, and I think, you know, many of the organizations we work with would agree. Yeah. And I love your point, you know, focusing on the areas to automate and then measure, get some of those wins underneath your belt 
you know, find some of those ways to make immediate uh, improvements because they do exist in every in every facility. There's opportunities to to improve. So, you know, one thing I am curious about from a uh, connectivity standpoint, when I think about CMMS, because we we talk to a lot of people, and we know technology is moving so fast. So, what get down to the device level for us, and, and maybe help you know, paint a, a picture for us on some of the devices or systems that are now being used in these CMMS systems. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a great question. Um, so of course, you know, what we've talked about so far, you know, I think there's so much value in CMMS just in and of itself. Mm-hmm. What we've seen, you know, and again, I've been, I've been with Fix now since early 2017 and there's always this promise, right? Like what if you could connect the equipment and the plant floor to your CMMS and what would the value be? Um, and I think for, you know, the last couple of years or the first couple of years of, of the journey, at least my journey personally, you know, organizations by and large, we weren't quite ready to make that step, right? It was like, hey, can I can I digitize? Can I get my data in a system? And that's a great starting point. And in fact, we still see that today, right? Like not everybody's ready to connect um, systems right out of the gate. But the, the organizations that are connecting the systems, and again, you know, it's like a microcosm of, you know, hey, start small and move quickly and find the gains. And I think you can apply that in, you know, kind of that connected uh, environment as well. But you know, if you think about, you know, running your PMs, you know, and I'll, I'll use the car example, you know, I you know, lo- love the car example where, you know, you could, you could change the oil every couple of months, but it doesn't necessarily account for, you know, how much you've used the car, right? If you used a lot or a little, and there's a wealth of great data um, at the equipment level, whether it be vehicle telemetry, whether it be the PLC, you know, how many units have I produced? How many hours has my um, equipment run? That sort of thing. And what if you could implement or utilize that data to drive your maintenance strategy? You know, could you find efficiencies around, you know, reducing the number of PMs um, in a given month or in a given quarter? Because, you know, maybe your utilization wasn't as much um, on that particular piece of equipment. And again, you know, you, you do, it at, do it on a handful um, number of equipment and then you scale that out and, you know, the, the savings and the efficiencies gained. Um, could we could could be quite substantial. So, um, you know, certainly an opportunity to, uh, you know, drive improvement. And to me, that's like the tip of the iceberg, right? And, you know, so many organizations we talk to, you know, there's automated vibration analysis, condition monitoring, oil analysis, you name it. Well, what if you could take those insights and convert them into actions without any human intervention? So without somebody having to read the report, and then go in and create a work order? What if the work order could go to the technician with the specialization in that category automatically based on the, the data coming from the equipment? And all this is possible. All this is being done today. And it doesn't have to be um, you know, expensive, burdensome, time consuming. So um, I'm just super encouraged by, you know, again, like, you know, what can the technology unlock and how can the technology serve the greater needs of the organization? Yeah, for sure. I mean, and it sounds like really putting that focus on conditional operational type of data to make better decisions in the moment that make the big impact, you know, for the end users themselves, for sure. So, I mean, it just, I love you. I wrote it down. You, you said, cause I think you said it two or three times, start small, move quickly and then scale. What great advice, you know, cause I mean, you, you don't want to, you know, try to eat that elephant all at once, but find those areas, at least that's what I think I'm hearing you say that, you know, you can make an impact, but figure it out there and then take it to the next level. Yeah, I, I agree. Right. Like, I think, you know, who wants to place a, uh, you know, expensive bet if you're going to do something at scale across an organization, across many facilities and thousands of pieces of equipment when you haven't proven it out, but you could prove it out relatively inexpensively in a subset, prove the value and then grow and tweak and you're going to learn some things. And um, I, I think, you know, part of that is, you know, philosophical part of that, in my opinion, is enabled by technology that's got um, you know, a, a simple entry point where, you know, you don't have to invest in a multi-million dollar project to find results, right? Like right. you can, you can do it in a uh, incubated sort of, uh, sort of environment. So, um, and, and, you know, the, the organizations we talk to tend to agree um, with that. And, you know, by and large, you know, they, they've shared that advice with us. So it's not, you know, this isn't me coming with uh, new, interesting industry thoughts. There's a whole bunch of people, a heck of a lot smarter than me who have kind of, you know, seeded the thoughts and, uh, hey, I, I happen to like it. So I'm here talking to you about it. 
Hey, man, and it's great advice. We used to have reliability programs we worked with customers on, and we would focus on, we called them just control groups, but it's the same thing, a small subset, right? Prove yourself, prove the worth, figure out the kinks, and then scale it from there. So I, I love it. You know, I think your, your approach is spot on. You're going to help so many people with it. And I, I, I've thought about, you know, a scenario here. I want to just roll out to you, Sandy, because I am curious on this because we have a lot of people that work inside manufacturing themselves who listen to Eco Ask Why, and we try to help them figure things out. So let's play out a couple of scenarios where headwinds may exist. Talk to the, to the listener who has a system right now, and it does, it does what they need for it to do. You know, so answer the question to, to, to that person, why should they invite, start evaluating a new system? What would you say to them? Yeah, you know, it's a, a, maybe I'll be a bit provocative, right? Like, you know, maybe you don't want to evaluate a new system, quite frankly, right? I mean, I think, uh, you know, I think it depends on your scenario and what your objectives are, of course, where we've seen organizations have success in evaluating a new system, to me, kind of centers around, you know, kind of two themes. Mm-hmm. Again, it's going to vary depending on, um, you know, depending on uh, every single, you know, organization and, you know, your objectives and where you're at and so forth. But, you know, where, where we've seen kind of success in that area, you know, number one, it's quite simply is I'll kind of, you know, kind of craft into two buckets here. It's, it's really adoption and efficiency. So when I t- think about adoption, you know, kind of, hey, are people using your, your system and are they using it? efficiently. So you know, what do I mean by that? Um, you know, are, are the folks who are actually working on the equipment able to capture data properly, accurately? At the end of the day, you know, if you're looking to measure performance and then improve performance, if you're not getting the right data and people aren't putting data in, in the first place, then you're really not going to you know, understand, you know, kind of current state and then understand the roadmap to getting to your future objectives. So, you know, when we think about modern systems, um, and systems that are mobile optimized and systems that are, you know, cloud, um, you know, cl- cloud-based systems um, that are user-centric where people can, you know, log in and figure out how to use it relatively quickly and easily. I think, you know, those, those two little buckets, you know, make it make a huge impact. And, you know, organizations that we've spoken to seem to have a lot of success in, um, you know, modern systems as a result. The other piece that I like to think about is connectivity. Connectivity has a couple of facets as well. So you can think about, you know, connecting your maintenance application to other best of breed systems in your environment. So best of breed systems could be your ERP, right? Like I think, you know, you see many organizations, they invest lots of money in the ERP. It only makes sense that you want things like your inventory, your items, your purchasing processes, all to live inside that system. Now that being said, the maintenance department, you know, they they likely want a system that's really geared around, you know, what does my maintenance day-to-day use case look like? You know, if I'm a maintenance user, I don't necessarily want to also have to log in to SAP and fill out purchase orders and check the stock and check out parts and so forth. So what if, you know, kind of the right system for maintenance also on the back end behind the scenes, fully integrated very easily to systems like SAP or NetSuite or Oracle, you, you name it. And I think, you know, so the connectivity piece is huge. The other facet to connectivity is really around um, what we talked about a little bit earlier, which is, you know, can I connect to my plant equipment and can I start to really take advantage of the data and the insights, whether it be on a historian, on a PLC, from, you know, vehicle telemetry, can I take advantage of that data and really action that data in a way so that uh, you can drive results? Um, you know, it's great to generate and analyze data and have lots of insights. Um, you know, lots of organizations do that. There's lots of great tools that do that. But ultimately, if you don't convert the insights into some kind of meaningful action, then you're, you know, not quite completing a loop. And I would argue you're not necessarily going to drive the results that you hope to drive um, from that data. So, mm-hmm. you know, to me, it's, you know, can you, can you adopt the system and can you use it and can you save time inside your organization? Number one, uh, I think modern systems do a great job um, in, in helping companies achieve those objectives. And then number two, you know, can you really connect to all of the other systems that may be in place so you can, um, you know, really drive kind of the maximum amount of value from the software? That's two great points. Two great. I, I love how you, how you went there with the adoption efficiency, the, the connectivity, tying it all back together. 
Now let's let's play another scenario. Let's say I recognize I'm, I'm the industrial end user. I recognize I have a gap, and my system could be better. But I'm having trouble winning support with management, whatever that may be. How would you help that person? Where should they start spending time, or or studying, or building their case up to really support doing a, that next level of evolution of CMMS? Yeah, I think there's a few different um, angles um, you could take, and you know, at the risk of you know stating the obvious for everybody who's who's watching this. You know, again, where where I've seen success personally, and uh, you know, in talking to you know champions kind of across the country, the first thing that that where they had success, or the first area was you know, hey, measure where we currently are, um, and demonstrate you know, hey, what what is the value of changing the current state? Um, it could be something simple, right? The metric could be, hey, you know what, thirty percent of our maintenance activities are proactive, seventy percent are reactive, and unplanned failures, unplanned downtime, you know, has X, Y, and Z consequences. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's lots of data out there, both, you know, from our organization and the industry that shows, you know, planned downtime versus unplanned um, is far more efficient, um, you know, far less disruptive to the business and has, you know, substantial impact downstream in all kinds of avenues, right? Whether it be production capacity, um, cost, you name it, safety. So there's there's a lot of different, um, you know, a, a lot of different ways you could approach it. But uh, you know, to me, I think always start with you know measuring current state. If you don't know where you are, you know, hard to know where you're going to go, um, and then building a roadmap. What I will say is this, you know, the software is not going to be a silver bullet. And again, I'm a software guy, but you know, time and time again, we see it. The software is not going to be a silver bullet. I think. You know, the number is 70% of all CMMS implementations fail across the industry. And I think the re like there's a bunch of reasons for it. And we've got we got studies that, you know, kind of go into detail on it. But, you know, change management is super hard. Um, but ultimately, I think if people expect software to um, be the silver bullet, I think, you know, you're not going to see the results that you need. I think, as I said earlier, you know, where, where we see companies have the most success is, hey, we've got a great process and we know how to run maintenance. Now we need a great tool that's going to, you know, kind of get out of the way and help us implement this process. And that's really where you're going to see the results. So, um, you know, before you have a CMMS, I think having a great maintenance program or a great idea of a maintenance program is ultimately going to drive, drive the results. Maybe a little bit unorthodox coming from a software guy, but I can tell you, you know, the software itself is not going to, you know, it's not going to be the, the change agent per se. Um, I think it's going to support all of the great ideas all of the organizations out there already have. Well, I, I can certainly appreciate the fact that you own that and that you and that you recognize it and that you went there. Because, I mean, that's you're right. It's not the silver bullet. You know, it's, it's one of those things too, garbage in, garbage out. If you don't make a, the best use of the of the system itself, and if you're not ready for it, uh, why go there? So, I mean, I guess one question that comes to mind then. So, if you're working in, in industry right now, who's leading the effort in some of this, these, uh, these, these, evaluating these systems and, and then who are they coordinating with? I'm just curious, is this IT as well as your, your operational type people? Do you have the IT OT uh, convergence there at some point where these systems are tapping in both, both levels from a networking? Just, just curious on, on, on who, who's the owner. Yeah, I think it's, there's always a partnership of course, right across multiple stakeholders uh, in an organization, but you know, if I had to loop back to maybe the first one of the first questions we talked about, which was, you know, how, how have systems changed and how have they evolved? Well, I think what's really cool about the cloud and modern systems is, you know, you don't need to, you know, bring in kind of a, an army from IT and, you know, re-architect all of your systems to, you know, get started and test some things and move quickly. Um, and what we've seen is, you know, it's decisions are made really um, at the operational level, which is great for all kinds of reasons, right? But I think the folks that know the process and the operations best, they're best equipped to make decisions around, hey, what software do I need to really support what I'm trying to accomplish? Um, and of course, you know, as you go through that journey and as, you know, you, uh, you, know, you get started and you put a system in place, you know, there's going to be a time and place where, you know, IT is going to be involved, you know, as we talked about earlier, you know, you, you want to integrate to your ERP, you know, there's definitely that partnership with IT. You want to integrate to the control layer. There's that partnership with IT where, you know, we're working through things like, you know, how do you securely move data between systems on the plant floor to the cloud and so forth. 
So there's always that partnership. But I think, again, you know, as we think about, you know, the benefit of modern systems is now decisions can really be made at the plant level with the people who know the business better than anybody. And as a result, in my opinion, they're best equipped to really make decisions around, hey, what software is going to help us achieve what we're trying to achieve? Mm -hmm. Perfect. I love it. Thank you, Sam. I mean, it really answered it. it. It painted such a clear picture for me. I know it did for our listeners too. So, I mean, I've learned a ton about CMMS just by talking to you. I love your passion first and foremost. I mean, you, you, sh you shared so much knowledge for us here today. Uh, we, we always wrap up eco -S Why with the why, you know, so give that why to the leaders out there who may be listening. You know, why should they care about their CMMS system and start really embracing the future? Because as you mentioned, technology is changing so fast. Uh, and if we need to, to get these, these manufacturing and these industries uh, to the next level from a business standpoint in the future, having that, uh, embracing this type of technology and CMMS is so important. So what would the why be? Yeah, well, you know, hey, I'm a I'm a Canadian living in Pittsburgh, so I can't I can't let you wrap without you know bringing in a hockey analogy, right? Okay. So, is it, who is it? The Wayne Wayne Gretzky said, "Skate to where the puck is going, not to where the puck is." I think I think I got that right, but you know, I, and I'll, I'll maybe broaden kind of the talk track a bit, right? It could be it could apply to CMMS, but it could really apply, I think, to how we think about the impact of tech in in the industrial space, and and you know, the why is this, right? Like we live in a super super competitive world, competitive landscape, resources are scarce, labor is expensive, materials are expensive. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, the winners, there's going to be winners, there's going to be losers. And ultimately, the winners are going to be the ones that figure out how to utilize all of the resources, all of the tools at their disposal to gain that advantage over the competition. And I believe that, you know, the right combination of people, process, technology will ultimately you know, enable the, the winners in the category. So CMMS, certainly an a integral component. Um, there's other components um, that, that go into it as well. Um, but I think, uh, you know, ultimately, you know, the, the people, the process, the technology um, really is what's going to drive kind of that, that separation between the winners and the losers. No doubt, for sure. And anyway, Sandy, this has been wonderful for the listeners out there that want to learn more want to learn more about Fix and the wonderful things that Sandy's doing, check out the show notes. We'll have links right there to go straight to the company, connect directly with Sandy so you can 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 learn more, get that demo, understand what that this solution could do for you. But Sandy, thank you so much for taking the time with us. And man, you really, you, you brought it today. That was a wonderful uh, eye opener for me on CMMS and where it's going with the evolution. Yeah, thanks so much, Chris. Really appreciate you having me. Appreciate everybody listening and uh, hope to do this again sometime. Thank you. Absolutely. You have a wonderful day. You too. Thank you for listening to Eco Ask Why. This show is supported ad-free by Electrical Equipment Company. Eco is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products. Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit EcoSY.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S-W-H-Y.com. -S